Preacher here. And this morning we're going to be talking about the plague of gnats. The third plague sent upon Egypt. And the differences showed between the prior ones. So, let's go ahead and read them. Starting in Exodus 8, verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and they struck the dust of the earth and there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. But the magicians tried their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. I love this because all along with the prior plagues, the, the magicians have tried to be like mockingbirds and recreate what God could do. Not to the same extent, but they were able to, to mirror it and never could mirror it to his perfection. And now God's brought up a plague that they can't even fathom on how to mirror and they come to realize who they're up against here it says then the magician said to Pharaoh this is the finger of God but Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said those who serve the spirit of this world have more spiritual awareness than those who block out the spiritual world altogether. And it's really cool because you can see multiple times in the Bible where God can reach by doing his works those who serve the spirit of this world. And they end up confirming who God is, whether or not they turn to him. And sadly, those who deny the spiritual world altogether. Their heart is usually so hard that they don't even want to admit what God is and what God can do, even when they can see it with their own eyes because their heart is hardened. Um, I want to share 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. Wisdom from the Spirit. Yet, among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God. For God decreed before the ages, for our glory, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of a person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand things freely given to us by God, and that we might impart this in words not taught by human wisdom but taught by the Spirit interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual and you know those who are spiritual and serving in the wrong way can come to see those truths but it can only be done through the Spirit of God and we have to be serving God correctly and rightly with no compromise says the natural person does not accept these things of the Spirit of God 
for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So as Christians, because we have the Holy Spirit within us, we have the mind of Christ. We have God here to help us, to teach us, to show us, to guide us. So when we come upon these spiritual people, we may be able to share with them the spiritual wisdom so that they see the truth in God. Now, whether or not they accept God is between them and God. We can't force them to believe. But they will undeniably see the power of the Almighty. I also want to read another point where someone who is spiritual serving the spirit of the world, the devil, saw the glory of God and couldn't deny it. Let's go to Acts 16, verse 16 through 20. It says, As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. Okay, let me, cre let, let me let you know who we is. We is Paul and Silas. And they've met this fortune telling slave girl. You see, it's the same old story. It's the enemy trying to mirror or mock what God does. Trying to do it, but, but it's just a reflective image. It's not to the same extent. So, you know, somebody that has a fortune telling spirit Sometimes we call them psychics. They, they, they can give you some wisdom. They can tell you some truths, but they can't tell you the whole truth because they're blind to it. Which is why the Bible says that we are not to consult these kind of people. It says, She followed Paul and Silas, or Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope again was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they are disturbing the city and they, advoc and they advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept and practice. So what happened here is the one that was spiritually in tune, the one that had an evil spirit within her, that spirit could not deny who the true God was, could not deny who its creator was, and started telling the truth. Hey, these men are here to tell you the way to salvation. And it's the same way with these magicians, that, with, with Pharaoh. Hey, this is truly the finger of God. But the people who were not spiritual did not want to hear it either time. Pharaoh's heart was hardened to God's truth. And these owners were more worried about their monetary gain than the truth that they heard. What was that path to salvation these men were talking about? They were telling people that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. He rose again in three days. And if you accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again in three days, you'll be saved. You'll go to heaven. You've been forgiven. Jesus paid your way, and all you got to do is accept it. To believe and receive what Jesus did for you. And when you truly believe, you're going to make changes in your life. That's called repentance. Now, you could be like these non-spiritual people. Harden your heart and not want to hear that message. But all that will do is land you in hell if you deny Him your whole life through. It's not God's intention that you do that. So all you got to do is accept it. Start a relationship with Christ Jesus today. Be blessed.